Hi there, welcome back. So today I'm going to talk about alternative births when things might not go according to the plan or to your birth plan. And the first thing I'm going to talk about is if you need a forceps or a von Tu's delivery. Now a forceps delivery is when um, your baby might be stuck in the birth canal. Um, he or she might have um, gone into the pelvis maybe not like this, remember I said maybe a bit back to back or started to rotate and not quite got there, or maybe has rotated fully and you've been pushing for a long time and the baby isn't quite coming out. Depending on how low the baby's head is, your cervix will have to be 10 centimetres dilated. Um, and then the decision's made, um, the doctor will come in the room, the anaesthetist, um, your midwife will be there, um, and they'll talk about alternative delivery. So you probably will have been pushing for a while maybe, or the baby's heartbeat has suddenly started to drop and it's thought it's quicker to deliver the baby with the forceps. They're like large salad servers. Um, you'll have one positioned um, one side of the baby's head, another one the other side of the baby's head. Um, they then overlap. Um, your legs are at this stage are in the lithotomy position when they're on the rests either side of the bed. Um, and the doctor's sitting in between your legs here. Partners, we always advise, stay at the pretty end. Um, and the doctor then slowly, as you push, will deliver your baby's head. Your baby's head will then crown and deliver just as it would as soon as it starts to deliver. The forceps are removed and you push your baby's head out. Then the shoulders ro ro will rotate, just like in a normal vaginal birth. The body is then delivered and usually then straight up to mummy and you still get the, that first cuddle with your baby. You will always need to have an episiotomy um, with a forceps delivery. Well, I'd say more often than not. And that's just a little cut down below. I'll show that in a minute. Um, a von Tu's delivery is slightly different. It's when a little cap is put on the back of your baby's head here. It's attached to a basically what something that looks like a bicycle pump. And a vacuum is created here on the back of your baby's head. So as you push, again, your baby's head is pulled um, with the von Tu's attached here um, and again the head is delivered, the von Tu's removed, shoulders rotate, baby delivered straight up onto mummy again. Because no extra width is going into the birth canal you can sometimes get away without an episiotomy um, with a von Tu's delivery. Sometimes they'll try a von Tu's delivery first if your baby has a lot of hair you'll just hear like a sound as that just slips off the head because they can't create the vacuum. So I'll try a couple of times if that doesn't work they'll then go on to the von Tu's, the forceps rather, to deliver your baby's head like that. So, an episi so again, get away with that, an episiotomy then. An episiotomy is just when you're cut from the birth canal away from the back passage, um, just so that it's thought with a, von Tu with a forceps, um, with the extra width, there's more risk of damaging the birth canal and your back passage. Um, so it's safer to have an episiotomy away from, from, your, back, from your back passage. Um, the stitches will be dissolvable, they usually take a couple of weeks to dissolve, um, they're usually put in straight away um, by the doctor that's delivered your baby, um, it's in a sensitive area, you're going to have some swelling and bruising there, um, but with ice packs and general good care they tend to heal very well. Um, during the procedure um, they'll empty your bladder, because remember we said with um, how if you've got a full bladder it can cause a problem for your baby's head to descend down. So a little catheter is put into the bladder there just to make sure that it's empty and not causing any problems. Um, depending on the type of birth, you might have a catheter left in there for 24 hours after you've had the baby, just so that you don't have to worry about getting up and going to the toilet if there's bruising and, and swelling down below. So it usually will be more comfortable for you to have the, the catheter left inside um, for 24 hours or so. Um, forceps and von Tu's tend to always be performed in theatre so you will be moved from the room that you're having your baby in the labour room that you've laboured in you'll be moved through to theatre and this just is just so there's more room for people because you will have a doctor and a more junior doctor you'll have an anaesthetist to make sure you've got good pain relief if you didn't have an epidural on board before then an epidural or a spinal um, is administered just before the procedure so that you can't feel anything that's happening down here um, and so they'll have the anaesthetist and their assistant. You might have a paediatrician, um, depending on the reasons why you're having the forceps delivery. If the paediatrician isn't in the room, they'll be just outside the room, um, ready to come in should they be needed. Um, and obviously your midwife, and you might have a more senior midwife or another assistant for your midwife as well, just depending on, on the situation. So you might feel there's quite a lot of people there, but they all have their job to do, okay? Um, that there. 
We've mentioned episiotomy there. If you don't have, um, if you're not having a forceps delivery, but it's thought that you need to have an episiotomy anyway, that's just so the area um, can be widened to facilitate the birth a bit quicker and easier. And sometimes that might happen if you've been pushing for a while and the baby's coming out really slowly and it's thought that the baby's heartbeat is dropping a bit and just to expedite delivery an episiotomy would be a good decision um, and you haven't got an epidural on board, they'll put an injection of local anaesthetic into the perineum um, so that you won't feel the cuts taking place, okay? And that means then if you have your stitches done straight away afterwards that the area is all pretty numb. Um, again, dissolvable stitches and they take about two weeks, okay? From that point of view. Um, if you haven't got to fully dilate it and there's a reason that they think they need to be delivering your baby and the reasons are far and varied from fetal distress to any, any um, illness with the mother, um, you don't have, the cervix doesn't have to be fully dilated to have a caesarean. So you could walk into the assessment unit and fetal distress be diagnosed and a caesarean need to be done and you can just have it straight away there and then. Um, usually a spinal anaesthetic would be performed, um, which is similar to an epidural, but um, is a one-off injection of the local anaesthetic and um, pain-killing uh, drugs that they use. And it works quite quickly then and will last for the whole procedure and so we'll wear off then an hour or two after the birth. Um, again, in theatre, there'll be the same amount of people as there would be for a forceps delivery, but there will be a scrub nurse and an assistant for her as well. So another couple of people. So you might feel that you should have sold some tickets and made some money out of this, um, because, but they all have their job to do. You will have met undoubtedly, obviously, the midwife and the senior midwife that's with her. You would have met the anaesthetist and their assistant beforehand, and you also would have met... Um, the um, paediatrician probably beforehand and the doctor and his or her assistant as well. So you will have met these people beforehand. It's just a scrub team that you probably wouldn't have met um, before you go into theatre. Um, so we'll now go on afterwards to any other complications that, that um, might occur.